A number of farmers are experiencing buyers of their commodities backing out of contracts due to COVID-19. Now, producers are looking for guidance on the non-performance of contract obligations in the time of economic disruption. Force majeure coming in once again. Roger McOwen with the Washburn University School of Law joins us now for your Rural Money segment. Thanks for joining us, Roger. Let's start with this concept. How does the provision work? Well, Christina, good to be with you. It's actually not an uncommon clause in contracts. And what it is, is basically a provision that says that the contracting party is not going to be liable for damages due to the delay or failure to perform under the contract because of an event that is beyond the party's control. And, and force majeure really means superior force or unavoidable accident. So it comes into play when you have a circumstance beyond your control that will excuse your performance, something such as, and not necessarily an act of God, but a, a, this is in addition to that, a war, a riot, a crime, a pandemic, and so forth and so on. So we have act of God clauses, which are basically natural type weather events, a flood, a fire, those types of things, a tornado. But then we have force majeure, which covers governmental type actions, which would affect your ability to complete the contract or a war, or a riot, or a, a pandemic like this. Really appreciate your clarification there. That's the best explanation I've heard. Now, what happens if a contract doesn't contain that force majeure clause? Well, in that event, common law principles apply. And so you might get a little bit different result depending upon the state that state law that governs the particular contract. So the basic question is how will the law deal with unforeseen events? One common law principle we call frustration of purpose. And so that can serve as a defense to contract enforcement, and that comes into play when some event that the parties didn't contemplate makes contract performance substantially different than what the parties originally bargained for. So frustration of purpose can be the result of government action. And, for example, I would imagine there were a bunch of uh, oil people that held contracts yesterday that now are claiming their, their purpose of their contract has been incredibly frustrated. So we're seeing that. We see collapse in ethanol market, and buyers don't want to buy the corn. We see hog plants close down, and so buyers of the hogs don't want to buy the hogs. And so they're, they're either arguing frustration of purpose under common law principles or force majeure as a result of the pandemic. And so it's a big issue, uh, even in the dairy industry, where milk uh, buyers don't want to buy the milk because there's no market for it. So we're seeing these pop up for the first time in many attorneys' practices. They, they've never had to deal with this issue, and now they have to deal with these types of clauses. Yeah, and, and I wonder, you know, is there going to be one precedent-setting case here? How are they going to do this? And how is force majeure interpreted, if you can explain that a little bit deeper for us? Yeah, well, there, it's interpreted, and I, and I do think we'll see more of these uh, claims being made. And there are there is some case law out there on it, so there is some precedent attorneys can can look to. But they're basically interpreted in terms of the language of the of the provision that's in the contract. Does it cover governmental action? Some of the contracts do. Uh, some of the contracts are pretty specific with respect to the language and saying acts of God, war, disaster, destruction of the, the party's facilities, not attributable to anything that a party did, or changing governmental regulations or laws. One thing that I can see perhaps coming up is someone may actually argue, well, it's not the virus that's caused the contracting problems. It's the action of particular state governors in reaction to the virus. And that may be an issue that a court somewhere down the road will have to deal with in determining whether a party can back out under one of these uh, contracts that contain the clause or under common law provision. Wow, and then it can get very tricky. No doubt the way contracts are written going forward will be different as a result. Thank you, Roger McGowan with the Washburn University School of Law. Always appreciate your insight.